Well folks, the moment has arrived. The project is done and I have a surprise for you tonight. We have Ben and his family here hanging out tonight. Look at that, there's Ben just lounging, reading a book. Enjoying the fruits of my labor. <laughs> that is for sure, you deserve that. This is a good deal better than rain and mud and cutting oh. cap until three in the morning. Yeah, cereal three o'clock in the morning was okay though. <laughs> Let's just say you, you deserve many more years of these kinds of evenings. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this for a while where we just sit down and say, well, first we need to celebrate the uh, completion of the project. That's an ongoing process. It's a Friday night thing, it's a Saturday yeah. night thing, it's a Sunday afternoon yeah. thing, it's it's the whole night. I just wanted to make sure you knew it wasn't a box you can check. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> to keep on inviting right. you. I see. This isn't done now. <laughs> Fair to say that I have brothers, I have da a dad and I have uncles, and Ben was the one that uh, really came through and broke the sweat over here. So thanks a million for all your help. Yeah, sure. It's a fun project. I can promise you it would have taken me at least two months longer if you wouldn't have been over here. Hey, I was happy for the work, you know, because I don't do much. <laughs> You cut on all 90 some feet of that cap there. Yeah. Probably the most memorable part was laying pavers until it got daylight. I remember firing up the paper saws at 4.30 in the morning. That was like one of those evenings where I came back from work and I was like, this project isn't gonna go away. And most of the battle is the logistics. When you're doing a project at Tussie, you take everything there and it stays there. Here, we were like, I was bringing it here. We were loading it up, taking it back so we could use it. So I was thinking about that driving home that evening from, from work to the shop and I was looking at the list of stuff I need to get at and I was like, this is ridiculous. Let's just do this. And it was really hot that week. Remember yeah. earlier in the evening it poured and I was thinking, oh, we kind of waited it out, worked in here and after a while it turned the spigot off and <laughs> I was really starting to drag about 10, 11 o'clock. Then we had, we drank those rain energy drinks and ate cereal at three in the morning and things were good again. <laughs> I left at like 6.30 or something. Okay. Because I had to meet with someone in the morning, but you worked until like lunchtime. Yeah, then I, then I, then I was dead the rest of the weekend. <laughs> Evening projects, weekend warrior stuff. But anyway, and I want to give a shout out to Matt and Steve for just letting us um, use of their tools and everything. It and was kind of a beg, borrow, and steal situation, mostly the latter, but <laughs> <laughs> it all worked out. <laughs> well, Steve and Matt have always been really generous and nice with like, yeah, letting us use stuff That's when we true. need it. Thank good, you, Steve and Matt. Good friends to have. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to address in this video was where did I go on the Tussie channel for the last two years, I guess now it's been, and Ben and DJ have pretty well taken over the YouTube channel for Tussie Landscaping and uh, been doing a <laughs> doggone good job, if I say so myself. It was a learning curve. <laughs> it was a learning curve. I remember the last time sheet that I clocked on a Tussie job was December 7th, 2020. It was that time when we, you and me went up there, we were supposed to stay overnight, we were supposed to do a two day job out of town, and we were like, we're gonna get this done. Oh, yeah, you're right. That was your last job that was assigned to Weston. Yep, we went up there and we did like a 24 foot pondless in a day. It was a cold day. None of us wanted to stay overnight, so we're like, we're gonna do this. That and was like Weston style. <laughs> <laughs> Lunch time. Yeah, I think we can get this done. Seven o'clock in the evening, lights starting to fade away. He's spreading mulch and. <laughs> hey, you got home to your wife that night. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. you were looking forward to a steak dinner on the company card. Which we got. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did. We made sure we got that. <laughs> Let me go back and I'll tell a story. So, in. Probably, this was probably seven, eight years ago. I was the guy that was probably the most comfortable with computers and stuff. We were still completely on paper. Like I was taking care of all the pawn stuff. I had a notepad. I was writing stuff down. I was forgetting stuff because it was only on paper. And if that got lost, then I didn't know. Like, I had nothing else, you know? And at that time, this was probably 2014-ish. I helped the company get a, the first software to where everything, like when someone called in and needed some, something done, like we put it into a software system where we could schedule it and all that good stuff. Well, that went well, but that piece of software was really good for operational stuff, not so much good for back of house stuff, like building a budget, figuring out your pricing, figuring out your estimating and all of that. Like it, you could just create a line item in that software and 
it, you could put your price in, but it wasn't going to tell you what the price was supposed to be. So anyway, we got a different software, and that one did really good on the pricing stuff with budgeting and helping you figure out um, what the pricing should be when you're bidding a job, but it wasn't so good on the operational side. And I remember coming home from work one day, and my dad was working on the back patio, clicking around on some graphs on a, on a laptop, and I was like, what are you doing? And he said, oh, well, um, I'm testing a, a software project. And I was like, you mean you can just like build something? Like you just say what what it is and then you tell the guys what you want to build and then they'll build it? And I was like, yeah. And so that's where the light bulb went on. And from that point on, I was on a mission to convince Steve and Matt to, uh, hey, let's build this. And well, I, while in hindsight, that was probably a, that was a very naive perspective that I had about let's go build our own software. And in hindsight, I would not recommend that a company goes out there and builds their own custom software. Because you already have one. Well, <laughs> let me just tell you, I went from being a foreman and a pond builder and a whatnot all to a full-time software guy. You're one business, uh -huh. right? And you end up becoming two because it, it's going to take the energy and the the know-how and the like, and even just dollars and cents. It doesn't. It it costs right. a lot. It costs millions of dollars to build really good software. Would you still have done it, knowing? Well. Yes, and the only reason why is because I always had this itch. I always had the bug that I wanted to go out there and start my own thing and like take a crack at business. I didn't want to go compete. You know, I loved what I did at Tussie. So right. I kind of had this like conflicting, like I'd love to take a crack at business, but I love what I did at Tussie. And Synced Up kind of just took those two, two things and, and merged it. Together, right. You know, the other thing I didn't want to lose is all the uh, the relationships I'd built with in the industry with Aquascape and all of that. Right. Like, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. We ended up deciding in 2016 we decided to start building our own software that was the year i started working yeah with Bessie. was it 2016 yeah. okay this video would get way too long if i if i went into all of the ups and downs and the should we pull the plug should we keep going and like this is costing 10 times more than we ever thought it would and this is taking 10 times more time and effort than we ever thought it would. And this is 10 times harder than we ever thought it would be. <laughs> so I'll just leave it at that and just say, I don't know where I got this, maybe my dad, but if there's one thing I do is like, I can't let something whip me. If I, <laughs> if I can't figure out how to do something on a spreadsheet or in a program or something, I just beat it to death until I figure it out. Right. And uh, for better or for worse, sometimes it's for worse. But anyway, we kept on slaving away at it and we got the software up and running. We used it inside of Tessie Landscaping for four years, making sure it was all set up and all the kinks were worked out of it. And then in 2020, we had our first contractor summit where we did that waterfall teaching class up mm -hmm. at Heritage Coal. Mm -hmm. And that's where we soft launched synced up that's what we called it that's the shirt i'm wearing synced up the idea behind the name was is your whole team synced up you know how the same as other softwares we use great for the operational front field side but not so great for the back office great for the back office not great for the front our vision was to have a a single system that synced up your entire team and it didn't just serve back of house or front of house it was the whole thing from lead through invoicing it would just make your whole company more efficient that way so anyway we launched it there first customers signed up there at that contractor summit in october of 2020 i kept on working in uh the crews i remember the first dozen or so clients we had i was doing service calls and onboardings and customer service yeah. stuff while out on the job site i remember opening my laptop up in a flower bed i remember weston trying to be two places at once and not managing any of them and i, and I kept telling him <laughs> weston you're being useless in both fields <laughs> and so yeah things just weren't quite ready to split at that time but. yeah it wasn't making any money sync that wasn't making any money at right. that point you yeah know, it was a tough transition yeah. for you and for everybody i think so i was like not running a crew but i was dealing with someone that was running a crew that was there about more of the time in body but less of the time in, in head in mind yeah <laughs> because what happened is there for the last couple months I, I would basically go out and i was like helping on the job site for the first hour or two and then to go sit in the truck for the right. rest of the day that's what was happening anyway december 7th 2020 was my last time sheet then it was winter time everybody was kind of shutting down anyway we started talking about synced up on some Facebook groups and stuff. And we got our first 100 customers like, like I was like, wow, like this actually is real. Cause up until that point, we're like, we think this is an industry need. We think this is a problem that the market needs solved. It was validated really quickly, very early on. Today, we have hundreds of contractors all across North America that are using synced up. What it is, is essentially a, a software that helps landscape business owners 
dial in their pricing. That's one of the biggest things that they struggle with is like knowing what should I charge mm -hmm. and is my man hour rate right? So we help them figure out exactly what their pricing should be and it's just a plug and play. Plug in your expenses, it spits your pricing back out with all your markups and overhead recovery and everything built in. And then it's like estimating, sending proposals out, scheduling the mobile app for time tracking, yeah. which Ben, you use every day. You use it every day. Yeah, the whole Tussie team does obviously. The big thing is really is knowing your numbers, like basically building a budget to determine what your pricing needs to be using that pricing and estimating with dragging and dropping and templates and production rates and all of that built right in so you can take what used to take three hours to go to quote and do it in 10 minutes. And then that translates to field operations, scheduling, the mobile app, clocking in and out. And what you get is an estimated versus actual progress bar that shows you in real time how you're doing on that job. Are you running ahead of schedule, behind yeah. schedule? And what's really powerful about that is in the old days before we had synced up, I, w I remember like being done with a job and a month later I'd get a phone call from Derek saying, hey, we're not, we didn't do so hot on the man hours on that job. You like, what do you think that was? And by that time I'm on my fifth job right. since then. And I'm oh, like, I'm I'm tracking it all the time, like yeah. every day almost. I submit my time cards and I'm like, okay, where are we here? Yeah. And then I know whether to get frantic or not. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, well, see what happened is it went from Derek calling me a month after the job right. was done. I get it. To me calling Derek before the job was even done saying, hey, next time this was a problem. We didn't have enough of hours or hey, we did really good on that. You know, that really is what a lot of companies need is the ability to not only make sure the pricing is right going into the estimate, but even if your pricing is right on math, on paper, you can still screw it up by saying, oh, it should take 100 hours, but then it took 150. You still wipe out your profit, it's even not, if your math is right. It's not gonna keep you from ever doing that again, but you'll know, you'll know when you do it, and it, it does keep you from making that mistake again. That's right, well, it gives you the information to be smart, to, to, right. to not do it and not know it. Last right. time we did that, it, it took 200, and it wasn't remotely a clo close, yeah. so like, you can stop guessing as much. That's right. The whole point of it is, is to know when you go right and when you go wrong, mm -hmm. so you can correct for the next time. And I will say, like, jobs are jobs, and there's always something that, you know, be it very difficult excavation or something. Even if you're tracking it for three years, you don't nail it every time. No. You, you get it a lot of the time. Yeah. I'm, I'm on man hours for most of my projects. Which is huge, yeah. because like, if you don't track, this is what happens. If you don't track your man hours and your expenses on a per job basis, well then what are you gonna track? You're gonna track probably your checking account balance. Uh -huh or you're gonna look at your profit and loss statement in QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. But the problem is by the time you look at your profit and loss statement in QuickBooks and that thing is saying flashing red lights, there's an issue, the million dollar question is why? Where? Yeah. What was wrong? Yep. And you don't know. You can guess. You can guess. Yeah, hope is not a good strategy. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> so what it does is instead of saying, well, what, where did we go wrong? Now you can go back in and dig back through your history and through your jobs like, well, man, every time we do a retaining wall, you know, I'm just hypothetically grabbing something, or every time we do a retaining wall that's double-sided and it's curved, we're not putting enough of man hours in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, now we can fix it. And the end result is sales and estimating is saving a boatload of time and the price is right and you have rock solid confidence that the price is right. Because right. like one of the biggest things I see in, landscape, in the landscape industry now that I've traveled all over and done all these shows to, to promote Synced Up is people aren't confident in their pricing. And so when uh, a homeowner says, hey, can you do it for five grand less? They'll say, yeah, sure. Right. And never realizing that they're basically doing the job for free, if you not only, worse. You only negotiate with your profit. That's the only thing, yes. you, that's the only thing you negotiate That's with. right. And so in some cases, it's even worse. Yeah. Or you come out in the red. I was I was talking to a guy today, literally, that was charging the customer less than his break even per man hour. So yeah. that's what we're all about preventing. Right. Because it's not about who works the hardest. It's hard work, and when I'm done, I want to get paid. It's right. And and you know, succeeding in all of this is not who works the hardest. It's yeah. Well, hard work counts, but it, it's also you know. Hard work alone isn't going to win the game for you. You know, I I gotta admit, it was a little uh, it's it is a little bittersweet getting out of the field because I genuinely love building water features. Like winning Aquascape Artist of the Year is probably the, one of the favorite things that we ever did. I can't Tussie. believe you took that title from me. <laughs> <laughs> the, one of the things I loved the most about putting about doing jobs at Tusky Landscaping for homeowners was finishing up and just watching the expression on the homeowner's face when the lights came on the first time, you plug the waterfall in. Because you're creating places for these people to make 
priceless memories that they'll always have for the rest of their lives. And it's, uh, it's, it was really rewarding and really fulfilling. I was a little unsure about that part, about walking away from that part, I gotta admit. You never look back. <laughs> but today, what really gives me a sense of fulfillment is having the conversation with that contractor that realizes he was working extremely hard, charging less than his break-even rate. We have a really quick little conversation do a little bit of quick math and we fix that for them. And then, and then they start tracking their time in the, in the app and then they're, and they're seeing like, oh wow, I'm, I'm making a mistake on this, every, every one of these estimates and they fix that. And the next thing you know, I was just talking to Gene, my sales, one of our salespeople today and we were just saying how the end result is more dads spending more time with their kids or with their family. It's because if you have your numbers right, then you're not working at a frantic pace mm -hmm. to try to make up for, mm -hmm. to pay your bills. And if you're saving time, well then you're not working two or three hours after work to do your estimates and quotes and businesses thriving instead of just barely surviving. And when that happens, you get to actually be able to provide for your family and your team, care for your team. In, in the way that you probably really want to anyway, but it's, it's, there's a lot of people out there that want to, but just can't, can't afford it. Can't afford yeah. it. So fixing that, coming in and just helping people dial a little a few things and then watch them take off and actually truly realize their dreams and not have to quit their business and go get a job. Like that's what lights me up today. And that's what we do every day, you know? So I don't know how long we've been recording now, but we said this was gonna be a 10 minute video. I know it went way over yeah. that, but that's basically the story. Since December 7th, 2020, talk about your experience in the field. I, I had had uh, big shoes to fill <laughs> and there was a there was a lot to learn in a short time I felt like not only when you left I had to learn two roles and I was running a crew for the first time I had only been working in that field for four years five years yeah four four, and, five, yeah. four five years so it, that was stressful and then there was like the filming part of it. I was a complete novice on <laughs> I mean I brought Weston's GoPro batteries but I just let him do his thing yeah that first summer you said 2020 was the end fall, of the year. The end of yeah. 2020. So yeah. we started filming in 2021. Yeah. yeah. And that summer was that was a drag. I felt a little bit overwhelmed, but <laughs> that went away. And once not every job is so stressful, it's it's more fun. You don't yeah. have to think as hard. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I I love it. One of the things that w when I was starting was not only did I have to keep putting out the quality of work that Weston had set. I was doing water features. He was an artist of the year. I had those expectations to meet. And I was working for Tussie. And Tussie is like Tussie. I know they <laughs> charge more than everyone else. I know that they put out nicer things than everyone else. And I know they don't screw up. You know? <laughs> well, we all screw <laughs> we, up. I know, but like, that's the mentality that was in my head. It yeah. was just like, those were big shoes to fill that yeah. first summer. Yeah. Well, I gotta tell you, you stepped right up to the plate, especially on the water features. It, it, maybe that's what I—that's what I. That's what you have an to. interest yeah, in. Right. Yeah, right. But to the crew too, you know. Right. But like the water features, it is an art, and not everybody is able to do that. But you, I watched you really develop because in the first couple of year, first year or two, you were like not real interested in the water features. Like, oh, that's your thing. You, where yeah. do you want the boulder? I'll bring the boulder. You know. <laughs> Well, one of the things you have to understand is like, it, it was hard for me to give input because you're the best in the industry. And, and looking back, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty good at what I do now. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'll ask a new guy, what do you think of this? Should we like do two spillways here or one spillway? And his feedback impacts what I do. Yeah. And I didn't realize that. I was like, you're just asking to be silly. You already know what you're gonna do. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't realize that, but looking back now, I probably could have given feedback that you would have used. Yeah, yeah, because it is a team. It is a yeah. team uh, effort. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we all get brain cramps. And I don't think about things. And that's when DJ and I build. We do that all the time. Yeah. Uh, we literally don't build a waterfall without consulting each like, other. What do you think? How's so, like you know? Am I being silly here? Or do you what? Yeah. What are you seeing that I'm not? Yeah. And oftentimes we see the same things and it's even more fun if we don't because then we can argue on it. <laughs> but it yeah. is a team effort. I can tell you this, the, the quality of water features didn't, everybody, like building water features is like handwriting. Everybody has their own style. Mm -hmm. That's true. But the quality didn't drop at all. And that's a testament to, you know, you were paying attention. And like, what's also interesting is you didn't really want to take the lead. Remember that 2020 season? Yes. When I was sitting in the truck and I would want yes. you to take the lead more on the water features and you were just kind of hesitant. But 
as soon as I left, I saw you doing, like, I'd come up on a job when you were just wrapping up and you were like, I was like, wow, that's really good, you know? And you <laughs> it takes, yeah, it takes time. I, I, and I wasn't sure where my role was. Yeah. And I probably wasn't in, as invested as I should have been. I was young, um, you know? Yeah, well, that, yeah, when I go back to- I 20, was living yeah. a life. <laughs> Today, you guys have done I mean, you've continued growing the YouTube channel, you continue growing Instagram, you've continued Artist of the Year level water features, and the crew is just running as smooth as ever. And I think it gave, it gave me a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment to watch yeah. you take your wings and, and grow. You I'm know? sure it did. Because that was a, that was a problem. That, that was heavy on my mind when I knew what was going to happen with this synced up thing. And I was like, how am I gonna make this transition work? And I, I was I knew banking that it on was. you pretty hard. I knew that it was. <laughs> you know? It, it came together. I remember the first water feature I built, the very first one. It was a four foot pondless, and I built it exactly four feet. And um, I had to go back and redo it. The lady didn't like it. Oh, really? She didn't. It was the first one I did on my own. She's like, I, I don't like what's built. I didn't hear this. And so that was the very first one. And I'm telling you what, that that took a hit on me. And I was like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this. I mean, the first one that I have to do, and like, I never heard of Tussie putting in a water feature and the client saying that they don't like it. It was, it was unheard of, and but I remember rare. coming in, it was a conversation I had with Dave and Steve, and Steve's like, you just go back in there, you tear it out, build it a little bigger, face the water feature more towards the house, the waterfall more towards the house, and go do it again. Uh, I went back and I fixed it, the homeowner was very happy with it, and uh, I, it was at that time that I decided that I can do this. I'll be able to build these. Isn't that crazy? You walked through that rain, flaming yeah. fire hoop, <laughs> and then you were fine. It was the one and only time, and it was probably the, it was that was one of the most difficult things I did working at Tussie was going back to that homeowner right the next morning. She hated it wow. because like she knew I worked hard on it. She yeah. didn't know it was my first waterfall, but yeah. she didn't want to say she didn't like it. But she did. But she didn't like and it. See, that's unusual because normally people say, "I want a waterfall," and their expectations are here. Our expectations right. are here, and even. The new guy can go in and build something yeah, that looks like you know it's true so previously i wasn't sure i had the talent to do it <laughs> yeah it's definitely a talent that can be grown and oh, acquired yeah. i have seen people that think in lego blocks be able to transition oh, to that for you know? sure i would so. think when i started i thought it was something that maybe you know one in ten people that come work for us can learn and i think now that i could teach anyone yeah. how to build nice water a functioning features. nice looking yeah. maybe not the best of the best but functioning and nice looking and good quality water i think feature. you can yeah. and and you can teach things that you can repeat on every that's right on every yeah waterfall. i mean we did that we, yeah. we did a we did that course on yeah. on that kind of the eight things that make even mm -hmm. you can go build your first waterfall and if you do these eight things it'll it's still look, look good it's going to look better than a lot of the stuff yeah. out there yeah i knew that the first summer the filming took a hit but DJ really stepped up there. Yep. I still don't really know how to run the cameras. I just talk when he says. So when he says, I, yeah. I'm glad he took part. He took care of that because yeah. that lets me focus on what I really like to do. And we did hire Nikki, our new yeah. marketing director. So that was kind of the last thing that was uh, that I that I was still responsible for at Tussie was just managing all the back end systems, marketing, and all that. And Finally, this spring we like synced up's been growing. It's its own business. It's its own thing. That thing will eat up my calendar like an animal. Um, so we needed to do something. So we hired Nikki, and she's now supporting Ben and DJ out there and going out and getting. We were getting more beauty shots and yeah. finished projects. That was another thing we we're getting a little weak on because it takes time. Yeah, it does. You know? and, and even even now, what, what's happening to collect those beauty shots? We we put in a project. We leave. Previously, we've been trying to film when we were done. The water was muddy. It wasn't very established. Was fresh. And, yeah. And so what we're doing now, we we do a project. We start the next one. And once we have about four or five of those projects complete, I say, all right, I'm going to have to give up DJ for a day. And sometimes I go with them. Sometimes I don't. But I go to the crew, to the project to the next job, and DJ goes out and shoots like all three the, or four. Three shots. or four projects. Yeah. So that's there's a lot of work behind the YouTube. Dropping it. a weekly video and you know, shout out to Clayton, our editor. Without him, that whole transition would have not gone well at all. <laughs> so yeah. He, I'm sure sometimes he just looked at the slop week and was like, <laughs> how? 
Yeah, we. How yeah. am I going to make something out of this? We did use some old footage that we had shot. That we're like, eh, I don't know if it's worth using. Like, maybe the film yeah. didn't go so well. And they're like, well, we needed the we needed the content, so we used it. And then I, I didn't something... understand anything about audio. Audio right. was a catastrophe that first. So yeah. I didn't know how it worked. Yeah, well, you, you can. And I had out bigger anything. things on my mind. Like like making the waterfall work, right? Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I still do go and hang out at the Tussie shop some mornings here and there, not very often. When we let him. <laughs> if I bring the donuts, I'm allowed to come. Yeah. You know, I talked about that first contract or something where we first launched Synced Up. That would have been three years ago this fall. If you guys want to come hang out with us, Ben, myself, the Tussie team at the Tussie shop, we're doing that contractor summit again, September 21st and 22nd. It's a Thursday, Friday. Um, I can leave a link to the registration here in the description of this video, but we're going to be doing a two-day event. It's basically for landscape contractors, people coming in from all over the country to just spend two days around some speakers, some content around how to use and leverage synced up more effectively. I'm really excited about the speaker, the, the main keynote speaker that we're bringing in. He's gonna be, his whole thing, I, I listened to one of his talks and his whole thing is like, the purpose of business is for humans to flourish. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why. Like, so you make money so you can pay someone well. You know, it's for human flourishing, right? And I really loved his talk, so I invited him in to be our main keynote speaker uh, for that. And we're gonna be doing it at the convention center here in Altoona. Uh, so a really nice facility. And we're gonna be touring Tussie Landscaping as an operation. Um, so if you're a contractor and have always wanted to see the operation, I mean, Tussie's a mature 30-year-old business, slow growth, solid systems. I basically grew up at that business. I remember the first year I worked at Tussie, I remember sitting down around a company breakfast and the sales goal was like 700,000. I remember thinking that that was a massive number, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I want to invite you all to come out here and hang out with us. We're going to be doing a barbecue here at my house, actually, right here in this patio, Friday night. I'm going to be here. Yeah. And that's during hunting season, so <laughs> saying a lot. You better come, you know? <laughs> I, I'm going to be here. <laughs> During hunting season. <laughs> That's one thing I genuinely enjoy uh, about the whole new Synced Up venture is getting to meet new contractors and hearing their stories and new friends, new connections, and uh, a new purpose. I'm dedicating my foreseeable career to helping more contractors thrive and not just barely survive and so they can provide for their families and teams the way that they, they want to. And in the meantime, I'm going to continue to, you know, I'm not going to change my last name from Tussie. I'm, I'm still going to hang out and be that annoying guy that shows up randomly. <laughs> We've been talking about removing you from the team chat. I know. I'm still on there. I'm still on the equipment chat, too. I didn't know that. <laughs> I silenced Good it. Good to know. It's on there. I know why. Why? So you can know what tools are available yeah, that's to, right. to take at the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm done now. I'm done with projects. I guess it's safe to remove Your time's from coming, one. bud. My house yeah, is Yeah, I know. Well, I guess that'll be the sequel <laughs> to this video is Ben's house. Yeah, it's and I know, I know I'm in for a beating when that happens. So anyway, I know this video got longer than we thought it was going to, but hopefully it wasn't boring for you. And uh, hopefully it sheds some light on where I've gone and what I'm doing. We have been given some hints here. Yeah, and there, and yeah. That, yeah. We, we wanted to do this much earlier. Yeah, we talked about doing this literally for in 2021. Year. Yeah, a long time like ago. That summer was when we were doing this project, then we were like, well, let's do it after that. Yes. And yes. then, I don't know what happened to last summer. So here it is. Yeah, so here Three it is, 2023. And you can this is what it. happened to Wesley. <laughs> I see him occasionally, yeah. once a month. <laughs> Thanks a lot for all of you on the audience that have grown the channel. Like when I started uploading, I think it was, it was less than a thousand subs. I think it was like a mm. hundred, a hundred or two hundred. And then so over the next couple of years it grew to, I think when you started uploading regularly yourself, it's like 12 or 13. It's close to 16 it's, now. Is it? Yeah. I realized it was yeah. that high. Yeah. Thanks and, to all and of you. And I like, I read your comments. I know there's people that follow the channel all the time. Yeah. I, I, I've never met you, but yeah. like, oh, this person's commented yeah. on the video again. So yeah. I, I do follow it. Yeah. Thanks for all your support and watching. And uh, hit that subscribe button and that like button and that whatever else button. All to, the uh, things he said. Yeah, all those things. Yeah. That, I mean, Oh, we got to shut the video down. <laughs> anyway, do the subscribe button so that you can follow along on Ben and DJ's projects as well as we're, you know, Matt's filming more now with Nikki. She'll be helping us get more, better content out there. So I'm really uh, excited for the next chapter of the Tussie channel. And thank you for letting me be a part of it. And if you want to, you can go follow Synced Up on social media. I mean, there's a full on video 
YouTube channel, Instagram, and everything going over there. So I'll drop those links down in the description as well. But uh, any final words, Ben? You're done. Peace out. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions.